So now what we need to do is we need to create the, the request handler, right, for this request. So let's go into app, which, we, which will be where we place our request handlers, new, Python file, and call this home. So this will be the file that, that uh, contains the request handlers for our home directory, so for our home page. Now, before we actually go ahead and implement this request handler, I want to show you guys one little thing, okay? Because this will be very important, and this is a very important concept in when you're writing code. Okay, so, so to demonstrate what well, my point, what my point is going to be, I'm going to open up our previous project, so our Hello App Engine project, and I'm going to demonstrate my point here. You don't have to go here and, and write the code that I'm going to be writing. Just, just, you know, listen to what I have to say and understand the point that I'm trying to get across. And if you have done that, that's fantastic, okay? So again, you don't have to type out what I'm going to type out, just, you know, watch me try to deliver my point. Okay, so in the previous application, we had our main handler, which was our home directory, which had a form, and we were rendering the form using the Jinja environment. And the, the second handler, all it did is got the username and the message and saved it to our, to our data store, and then we immediately redirected back to the home directory. So essentially, we weren't actually rendering anything in this request handler. But what would happen if we, in fact, wanted to render something here? So say we wanted to, to print out a success message, okay? So I'm going to quickly just, I've already created a, a success template here, and it's basically only saying a header one saying success, thanks for signing in to my guestbook. Okay, that's all it has. And now I want to render it when someone actually posts a message instead of redirecting them. Well, what could I do? I guess the simplest thing would be just to copy all of this code and paste it here, right? We have our, our Jinja environment. We're not going to pass anything to the render because it will be completely static. And instead of printing home.html, I want to print out or render success.html. So I'm going to so I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to CD into my hello app engine application. I'm, 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 and I'm going to launch my application. Okay, great. Once it's running, I can go to my application and say, Mike says hello. Okay. And post this. Okay, great. We see it's it's working, right? So instead of redirecting, we are actually printing something on the screen. So our functionality is working, but there is a big, big but, and this is what I want to, you guys to remember forever and ever. What we have just done is considered a very bad practice because we have just duplicated a bunch of code, and concretely, we have duplicated these lines here, which, which are quite a few lines of code. And the thing is, well, I mean, say we, we open up, let's say, 20 request handlers, which is still, you know, not that many for a big project. Okay, so we have 20 request handlers, and in all of the 20, we're declaring the template directory, we're setting up the Jinja environment, so on and so forth. What happens if tomorrow I want to change the name of the templates directory? Well, I would have to go and change it in all 20 request handlers, and this would be a very, very tedious task. What would happen also if I wanted to pass in, say, say different, you know, variables to this Jinja2 environment, which it accepts a lot of variables. So what if I wanted to, to you know, pass in a, a new variable, say a configuration variable? Well, again, I would have to change it in all of 20 request handlers. So again, this is a very, very bad practice. Whenever you see that you're, write, you're writing the same code more than once, you have to stop and think how you need to abstract that code to make it reusable, right? There is something very important when you're coding, and it's making sure your code is as reusable as possible whenever it needs to be used by, by more than one function or something like that, okay? So that's, that's the point I'm trying to get across. We need to figure out a way to implement all of this code so that it's reusable by every single request handler we will make in the future. And this will also allow us to have much cleaner code. Okay, so let's go back to our project and see how we do that. Okay, and this is where the framework folder comes in. In here, we will be writing our own custom request handler, which is, which will, we will build on top of the web app 2 request handler. But in this way, we can build on top and add our functionality on top. So in this way, we will have a already working request handler thanks to the web app 2 framework, 
And in addition, we will add our functionality, which will be to load any given template that we pass into our, our function. Okay. So let's create a, a new file instead of inside the framework. So right click and create new Python file and call this request underscore handler. Okay. So the first thing we need to import is the web app to request handler since we're going to be building on top of that. So let's say from web app to import request handler. Now we can go ahead and create our own class and call it whatever we want. I'm going to call this yum search request handler. And in parentheses, we want to put the request handler, right? The web app to request handler. Okay, and here we can start writing our own functionality. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell where our templates directory is. Now, in this case, it will be slightly different than the Hello App Engine project because we have our file inside of a framework folder. So we need to figure out a way how to get outside of the free framework folder so that we are in our default folder and then navigate into the templates directory, okay? So let's just start off by saying template directory is equal to, and here we need to import OS. So let's say it's equal to os.path.durname underscore underscore file underscore underscore. So this is very familiar to what we have already done. But here's where, where things change. We need to navigate out of this folder. So let me open up a, a here a, a new terminal window. And I'm going to show you how you navigate down a folder. So I'm going to cd into my project app engine yum search to default and framework so this is essentially where we are currently and we want to navigate out of this so the only thing we have to do is cd and add two dots this will go back down one level to the default folder okay so we see default default and we have from framework we have cd into the double period which has essentially taken us out of the framework folder down into its parent folder okay so how do we do this in Python? Well, to this directory, we need to append the, the double period. And the double period in, in Python is calling the os.parent directory method. But in order to do that, we first need to join. Okay, So we need to join this path with the parent directory. So let's say os.path.join. So this will be one, the, 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 the directory, the current directory. And we want to join it with os dir so this is parent directory okay once we have done that we need to call the absolute path on all of this because when we're working on our local machine the path is not going to be exactly the same as when we deploy our application to the production server the the, the path may be slightly different just because they may be using a different version of the operating system they, they may be well they, they probably are using a different operating system I'm using for example a Mac and Google's probably using Linux or something so to unify all that and make sure everything works, first we need to call os.path dot sorry dot absolute path and put all of that inside of the absolute path. Okay. And now we can actually go ahead and append the the templates directory to all of this, right? So now all of this code evaluates to as if we were in the default directory. So now what we need to do is to go ahead and again join. So so is path dot join. And I'm going to put this in a new line so that it, we can see what we're doing. And then add templates. There we go. So now we essentially have the, the path to the templates folder. Okay.